Hey everybody, Dalton Vaughn here at the Better Outdoors Archery Pro Shop with the Excel Accu Hunter. Now we're going to be going through this site again. It's been four years since our original review and we've learned a few things. They've made a few changes and have upgraded a few things. But we're going to go through the site base, the features of that. Then we're going to dive into all the different scope options for the Excel Accu Hunter. So if you're looking for a really nice made, really well built, single pin or multi pin slider sight, well, this might just fit the bill. So let's go dive into it. Now we're gonna start with the features of the sight base on the Accu Hunter. Now this of course is a slider style sight. So you dial the elevation right here with this big knob up and down uh, to move your yardage. And it's got a lock, this green lever right here, to lock your elevation. You can unlock and lock it. That way it can't move and work its way down while you're shooting. It's also got the sight tape angled towards the shooter, so you can see it at full draw with most bows. So what else is nice about this is with the sight tape towards you, you draw back. If you second you'd guess what you set it on, or maybe don't remember, you can go, oh wait, okay, I see it, I'm good to go. Uh, so that's nice. We're starting to see that in a lot of sites uh, nowadays with a single pin do like that. Now it does have an adjustable yardage pointer and the 20 yard dead stop so this one's just set out of the box so say your 20 yard marks right here well when I dial it all the way up in the dark as soon as I get there in the stand in the morning anything like that I dial it up to the top I know hey I'm at 20 yards when it hits the stop I'm ready to go that way when it gets daylight then I can adjust it or if I need to range an animal and carry on just like usual from there but that is a nice little feature You're starting to see that on a lot of sites too. Uh, and this is all slotted. Here's what's good is, say you're shooting a little bit higher than what it's at currently. Well, the yardage pointer slotted and the dead stop is slotted. So you can move any of this independently. So say your sight tape is dead on, your marks are dead on, but you're two yards low at every shot. So from 20 to 60, you're two yards low. You're not off different, you're two yards low every shot. So. What you can do is move it to, say, 32 yards. Then move your indicator back to 30 yards. So your point of impact is back set. Your ballistics haven't changed. So that is something nice because, like, say you put your sight tape on in the wrong spot with some other sights. We've done this before in years past. And go, man, I just put that in a bad spot. So now I've got to take my sight tape off, put it back on, so I'm sighted back in. Well, you don't have to deal with that with this style sight, with this adjustable pointer. Uh, it's just like a target sight if you're experienced with any of those at all. So this is a really nice, kind of a, in between a hunting sight and a target sight with some of the technology it has and features. Now as well, you can move the entire windage block elevation, the whole deal, up or down one position, which is this is a very, very coarse adjustment if you're shooting like wicked low or wicked high and you've got, your, you've got this set where you've got the most travel, well, you can just adjust it here, and this moves the whole scope up or whole scope down. They come out of the box in the center position, which is generally good, but what I like about this site overall is there's just so many adjustments, and there's probably a few too many adjustments, you want me to be honest, but I'd rather have a few too many than not enough. And by being able to adjust the entire scope up here or down here, you don't ever have to take this first axis off because then if you don't get that setback dead level, you're gonna have some problems at distance. Now, speaking of all of that, when we sell these sites, whether online, in store, setting up a new bow, putting them on a bow that we're restringing and retuning, whatever the case, we're gonna go through with our sight uh, leveler and we're gonna set your first, second, and third axis on your, with your bow or for whatever bow you're gonna be using it on. So when you get out of the box, you're ready to go. The closer you have all those things set, the better you're gonna be able to utilize everything this site can do and all the adjustments that it has. That's where we see a lot of people that get a, bow, a side out of a box, throw it on a bow, unfortunately, and it's not level in any capacity. The first axis is off, which your first axis is right here, like I discussed previously, and this is actually how your sight tracks up and down. So if this is at an angle, and you move your sight up, you move your sight down, you're gonna have some left or right misses uh, going on, depending which way that is. So you want that set. Your second axis are these two bolts, and that's gonna set your scope itself level. So once you have your sight level, your first axis, you have your scope level, your second axis, then you set your third axis with these two bolts, and that's uphill and downhill, and that's gonna be a door swing angle. So it's gonna move this way. 
So that's another little adjustment that it has that's really, really helpful. You're definitely going to want to make sure those are set, whether you get it from us, you get it from your local shop, or you do all this stuff at home yourself. You're going to want to have all that sort of thing set from the get-go. Now, a little change they did make, and I really like this, they went to two bolts uh, for the third axis adjustment so that it's not as likely to get loose or to move or anything like that. Uh, we didn't really have a lot of that with the previous year's AccuHunters, but this did uh, just kind of pretty much bulletproof everything up. Only thing that I felt like it really needed an option for, and it has that. Something else I like about any site built like this, not just Excel, is the sight base over here where it mounts to the bow, the actual mounting bracket, it's not got anything in the way, so your arrows and your quiver don't hit it, anything like that. The knobs forward of the bow, kind of like a regular fixed pin sight would be, so everything's in front of the bow, so you don't have any clearance problems with any quivers or anything like that. We do a lot of Matthews in particular. It works awesome with the HD6, works awesome with the Q-Light. Uh, in particular, but it works great with basically any quiver out there. So I know that's minor, but it is something practical to think about when you're putting your setup together. Now something that really appeals to me personally, because I do a lot of tarred archery, really enjoy that aspect of it as well, is the windage block is the same setup that we have on the Excel Target sites and a lot of the other brands, but it's a really, really fine adjust on that. It's almost microscopic, so if you want to say put five clicks in, it's going to move just barely, generally, so you can really fine-tune your windage and not just make one click and it's like four of these. Some sites are a little coarse on their adjustments for that. It's a little bit of a complaint that I have when you're really trying to fine-tune uh, for me personally. So I do like that about this particular site uh, in general is it's so adjustable right there. And if you really want to get out in the weeds, you can use these numbers on the side to keep up with where you started at. And it's got hash marks on the top too to do the same thing. So it's quite a bit going on there. You can use that if you'd want. If you don't want to, that's cool too. Also, you can mass adjust the sight. So you say you get out of the box and you're shooting this far left. Well, if you take just this bolt loose, don't ever touch these. Don't, don't do that. Only tighten those up. Never loosen those up. You're going to have a bad time with your, with your sight axis. But jokes aside, you're going to loosen this bolt up, move your sight, which your scope, whichever way it needs to go, tighten it back up, and that's your course, your mass adjustment of the scope, and then fine tune from here. Personally, I like to try to get this windage block toward the uh, center of it is dead center of that center mark. That way I know where I started at if I do make any adjustments. So that's handy as well. Now the sight tape system is really nice, really nice tapes. You've got 40 different options, which sounds like a lot, but it's really not. Generally, if you have a really short side axis or a really fast bow, you'll be using one through 20. Though I really don't see very many bows that we build uh, that are in this one through 20 sight tape range. Generally speaking, most every bow we build is between 21 and 40. Uh, and it's not completely dependent on speed. I know a lot of people believe that sight tapes are, but it's not 100% for just speed. You've got sight radiuses, you've got peep heights, uh, things like that that play into which sight tape to use. So I do prefer, really prefer this system. And according to Excel, and I have sighted mine in this way and it does work very well, a lot of our customers do the same. They either set a 20 and 40 mark or set a 20 and 60 mark. And what they do, is they go to 20 yards, or they side it in, I should say, at 20 yards, make a mark with a pin where 20 is, okay. Then we're gonna dial down to 60, make another mark with a pin once we're dialed in, okay. So then you're just gonna take these, what I like to do is fold them over and go through and find which 20 yard mark at the top matches with the 60 yard mark. Let me get where you can see that. So you got your 20 yard mark, your 60 yard mark. So just match those up, hold them up here to the side till you find one that fits. And that's the official way to set your sight tape with Excel. It is a handy system. It's not as hard as what it looks by any means. We've got a video coming uh, to illustrate that, to show you a few tricks as well to that. What else is cool is Excel includes all of the wrenches for your sight for pretty much everything on the sight. They've got a wrench with it, got nice stainless screws that go into the bow, so that's nice. And these wrenches, really, they fit a lot of different stuff. So good on Excel for including all those wrenches. And they're not little cheap dinky wrenches. They're actually pretty decent little wrenches too, so it's even better. Now this kite sight can be switched to left or right hand, so it's ambidextrous. You don't have to buy a dedicated left hand model, but on our website we do offer the option of right or left hand. 
because we will, before we ship it, before we install it on your bow, we will flip it to where it's a left hand. And what happens there is you switch this windage block around, you put your third axis on the bottom, so all this goes down there. Then you're gonna have to move your level to the bottom and you're gonna have to take the pin completely out and bring it in from the bottom so that it'll be left-handed. But that's something that we do free of charge when you check out uh, through us for this particular site, which a lot of shops can do that. It's not that hard if you need to do it at home. Thing is, you just wanna come back and make sure that your, uh, all your axis on your site are set and are level. Now this site, generally with any of these scopes, is gonna weigh right at 10 and a half ounces so it's not real heavy, it's not real light, but it is substantial. It doesn't feel cheap, doesn't feel plasticky. This is an all made in USA site uh, in Virginia. It's a really nice made site as far as that goes. Uh, and it's everything's metal. Everything that needs to be metal is metal. So you're not gonna have trouble with that part. And then it's got three different scope options that we're gonna get to just here in a moment. If you're liking what you're seeing in this video, ready to see more, make sure you subscribe to our channel so you can stay up to date on all our reviews, our bow builds, a lot of our other content, as well as find us on social media at Better Outdoors Archery Pro Shop. That's on Instagram and on Facebook. Make sure you like this particular video. That brings it up in the search for us so more people get to see it. And we are located in Lepanto, Arkansas, a small town in northeast Arkansas. And we're about 45 minutes from Jonesboro, Arkansas, and about the same from Memphis, Tennessee. So we're right here in the northeast corner of the state. You can give us a call at 870-475-3337. Always good for a good conversation. Let us know what you think about this site. Maybe you want to get you place your order. And as well, to make it even easier, you can visit our website, betteroutdoors.net, to place your order. Send us a contact us, an email there, and say, hey, I've got this going on. I want to get this bow tuned. Whatever your inquiry may be, we're here to help and continue with your archery needs. So now, back to the video, and let's go over the scope options for the AccuHunter. Now the AccuHunter has three different scope options now. You've got your standard, you've got your plus model, and you've now got your AccuStat model. But we're gonna start out with the difference between your standard and plus models. This is the standard uh, single pin option. This has been really popular, really nice scope. It's all aluminum, real well made. Uh, it's threaded on both ends, so you can put a, the torque ring from the plus on here. You can put the lens retainer in it. You can do a lot of different things, put sunshades, things like that on it. Uh, as well though, just starting out, all of them have the level up here in the sight picture. I like that because I can see the level at full draw in the moment so I don't have to look off target, look off the scope uh, to really to see it. It's just kind of my peripheral. I like that about it. I like that Excel typically has really small pin posts. Now they're really tough. I've never broken any. Uh, they're aluminum, so you're not really going to have any trouble there. I do like that pin post uh, setup because I don't like a real giant pin post. Even with a .10 pin, some companies have got just a huge pin post, like the same as they'd use on a .29 size pin, and you really just can't aim that fine with it. But that is something I like about Excel in particular, and some of the other companies are starting to adopt this. Uh, like this one, this Plus model has the .10 pin in it, and it's a lot smaller. Look how small the pin post is for that versus the .19 pin post. So that is something that's a real big selling point to me personally is the size of that pin post and the pin. Now you can get the standard model with the .19 or .10 pin either way. The .10 pin, whether you get the plus, the standard, or the AccuStat model, they're all $10 more for that smaller pin. Regardless of which model you get, they all have a lot of fiber that wraps around here, so the pin is really bright. You get this .19 pin out in the sunlight, and it's huge, it's really, really bright. So majority of the customers do go with a .10 pin, but if your up close vision isn't quite as good as it used to be, I've got no problem in that case using the .19 pin, you'll be just fine. And that's really true of a lot of sites across the board. Now, something that the standard model does not include is actually quite a few things. Your plus model, and these are gonna start at $259.99 with a .19 pin. And that's for the whole scope, the whole setup, whole sight and all. So your plus model has the big torque ring on the back, this big white ring. I can line up my scope and my peep really easy with that. I really like that little feature. That's one thing that I really have got to have to shoot my best is I can line that up so much better. It's also got this Rio stat. So this moves over the fibers. You've seen this on other sites and this side in the past. 
but it moves over the fibers to brighten and dim the pen as you need it in the sunlight, in the shade, in the blind, whatever the case. You'll be able to find a lot of uses for that. It's actually a lot more handy than what you really expect if you've never had that. Now it's also got this crosshair that's optional. It comes right out. You just take this ring off the front. This is the lens retainer. So if you want to run a lens, this is kind of a double whammy. You can run a lens, a two, a four, or six power lens in this scope really, really easy. But to take this crosshair out, you just simply unscrew the front of it, comes on out, this piece comes off, crosshair comes out, and it's also got this lens frame too. And generally, when I set these up, if we're not going to use the crosshair or lens, I'm just going to go ahead and take these parts out, put them in the box, that way I don't lose them in the woods or something. So I just go ahead and take that off and just leave it off. So here's your sight picture. Uh, without the crosshair. Really clean, just like the, just like the standard, really clean sight picture. Uh, so you do have those differences between them. So that's your difference between your standard and your plus model AccuHunters. Moving on to the new AccuStat 2 version of the AccuHunter. This is the new version they have. This is something I've been waiting on for a long time. With this, you've got an th option of a 3 or a 5 pin, as well as a lot of custom options if you want to. A little bit of an upcharge for those and a little bit of a weight but you can get them in any configuration as far as pin size, color, uh, amount for that matter uh, as well. So you got a lot of options there. But standard colors on these are going to be a green, red, and green pin. It's just the general standard color. It's the standard, which you'd say price. And this particular site with, a, with three .19 pins starts at $339.99. And once again, if you go to the .10 pins like this exact one has, you're looking at a $10 upcharge, so not a lot of difference there. Now this one also has the same rheostat style cover uh, for the pin fibers that rolls around here to dim and brighten your pin using the sunlight. Like I said, once again, really handy. You've got your level up here in the sight picture, so that's really nice too. And what I really like about this particular sight is how this adjusts, these pins adjust. So, you just take your wrench, loosen it up on the front. What's cool about this, as a side note, is regardless if these come loose or not, as long as you don't dial the micro adjust for the pins, if you're out hunting out west, something gets loose, they're not going to move. So regardless of what happens here, they're not going to move unless this is turned. So with that in mind, to adjust this, you're going to loosen up each pin you want to move. And you can loosen up all three, you can loosen up one, you can loosen up two. Then turn this dial and watch this. I've got the bottom two pins loosened up so they'll move independently. The top one's set, it's not going to move. It's only going to move if I loosen up on this end. This is one of the best ways I've found for a fixed pin side of any kind to be. Excel's got some other fixed pins that are identical to this that are just a straight fix, not on a slider bar. But what's so handy about this is instead of sitting there fighting with Allen Richards, trying to move it just right or trying to set a set screw in enough and one out enough, all this, you just loosen that dude up, turn it until you get it where you want it, really fine tune it, tighten it back up, and then do your next pin. And I usually like to run my top pin in the dead center of this housing too, so I've got a good field of view above uh, my top pin to be able to see. And there's no one hard, fast rule of what distances to set these pins to. Some customers do 20, 30, 40. Some do 20, 40, 60. It's just all what you want to do. And then there's also no rules for this either. If you want to set your top pin to be the one that's accurate with your sight tape, go ahead. If you want to do your bottom pin that way instead, you can do that too. So it's a good hybrid pin sight option. And I, like, I really like this particular scope. It's got a real small pin post, just like we talked about with the uh, regular AccuHunter scope, the AV Hunter scope. And you can get this, site, this scope by itself if you already have an AccuHunter and you want to do a little change or a little upgrade, and they start at $169.99. Now something else this also comes with when you open it up is it's got this different second and third axis block. So if you need to shim this scope over one way or another to be able to work with your setup, your riser, whatever the case, it does have that. And that is something you may need if you buy just the scope by itself. So keep, keep that in mind. I really like that this setup comes with this piece. That's uh, really handy to have. But this is a really, really nice setup. For your, for your multi-pin setup, guys, if you're wanting to do something a little hybrid, this is a pretty cool way to go. 
My final thoughts on the Excel AccuHunter is this is a site that appeals to a lot of different categories, whether you want to just whitetail hunt, you're wanting a real basic site, something like the standard, something that's a nice site, something that's going to stay together, whether you're wanting the plus model that's got a lot more gadgets, a lot more things to, to play with and adjust and use to make you more effective, or if you're more of a western hunter and you're wanting to go to the three pin style, five pin style, slider style, well, we've got that option too with the AccuHunter now. I'm really happy with that. My long-term opinion really hasn't changed on this site. We've got customers that have had these since 2017. None of their accesses have moved. Their windage block has never had problems. And they are overall super pleased. Even the pin's still bright, even after being in the sun that long. So really satisfied on the long-term with this site. If you're looking to buy a site and keep for a while, I would not shy away from this site at all. This would probably be my probably my top two pick uh, for the site to keep for the long term. I've got guys that I've put this site on four different bows they've had since they got it back in 17 and they're still shooting that thing. So really satisfied with that. So I don't think you'll find an option that doesn't fit your needs with the AccuHunter. There's just so many and you can arrange them in so many different ways. It's a real modular system. So that's really, really nice.